G'day guys and gal. As you learn more and more about Warhammer 40k lore, it does get a bit grim. And no, not just because GW says it's grim dark like every five minutes. Life as a human is hard. Worlds are torn apart on the daily, either by demonic sodomites or space bugs of death. The leader of your faction is a lithium battery that's struggling to recharge and a big ass chaos rift just tore the galaxy in half. Not to mention the soulless robots with technology beyond your wildest dreams are waking up and they aren't on your team. So is everyone just fucked? Is there even a point in anything if it seems like even the greatest of Imperial victories only serve to prolong the existence of the rotting carcass that is the Imperium? The answer is watch this video and find out you impatient little woman respecter. Before we get started, it's October. Do you want to know why October is an absolutely awesome month? It's because it's the month where my city's lockdown ends. Freedom, baby! I don't mean to brag or anything, but I've uh, endured the longest lockdown on the planet. But I'm not the only person that can get set free this month. You can too. Using none other than Surfshark VPN. We know the drill. Surfshark, despite the unfortunate lack of surfing and sharks within their company, know how to make a pretty bloody bulletproof VPN for a damn good price. Why do I need a VPN, I hear you ask? Well, it's because I said so, you little sh- <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> because a VPN is the only true way to achieve total internet freedom. Any blocked website in your country is now accessible with just a click. Small Netflix libraries can now be doubled, and if you want to access some seedy content, turning on a VPN before you do this will guarantee you are completely anonymous. All this and more for only $2.95 dollary dues, which in real money is just, it's really not much. <laughs> to get that 83% off deal, use my link and code below, MajorKill. And if somehow you don't end up loving your new internet freedoms, then Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee. Cheers to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over if the Imperium, Tau and Elder are doomed to a slow painful death, or if there is a genuine chance that they could end up making it in the long run. Who knows, maybe the space bugs of death are the ones who should be worried. Probably not, but maybe. Let's get into it. First things first, what are the current major holy shit that's a bit of an issue a eh, problems that the Imperium is facing? That's right, climate change. A warming of only 2 degrees Celsius would cause countless human deaths. I mean, at least that's what the Imperium wishes was their biggest problem. They gave up on that a while ago. Like, if there's one huge difference between real life and the Imperium, other than, you know, all the science and magic and shit, it's that the Imperium gives zero fucks about how hot they make a planet, and I'm pretty sure they get a stiffy every time they drive a non-human species into extinction. Is there a threat of collapse from within? Is the Imperium structure so flawed that eventually it will crumble, even without external pressure? I mean like, yeah, theoretically, the Age of Apostasy was a good example of a bad leader wrecking the Imperium's tits, but when he was killed and a good leader took charge, the damage that had been done was quickly reversed. The Imperium is just so vast and has so many failsafes that it's nearly impossible for it to totally collapse from within. By failsafes, I mean if you manage to sabotage the Imperium to a point where the Emperor himself becomes endangered, the Custodes will remove your spleen and hang you with it. Or the Assassins will turn you inside out, or a Space Marine chapter will purge you. You know the drill. When Gulliman returned from the dead and took command of the Imperium, various high lords and influential figures with a ton of resources plotted against him, however he was able to swat them like they were nothing but flies. To really drive the point home, the Imperium has been constantly assailed by all matters of demons and xenos for 10,000 years, yet it still stands pretty strong. If it was weak from the inside, it would have crumbled by now. So the internal threats aren't a big deal. What about external? Fuck yeah, there are external threats. The Orcs, despite their fun-loving nature and the fact that in 9 out of 10 stories, the Imperium stomps their asses hard, actually got the closest to destroying the Imperium since the fall of Cadia. I've already made a video on it recently, so check that out, but the Orcs somehow managed to produce a couple Crocs, who were able to create attack moon Death Stars. One of these attack moons was positioned above Terra itself, and the destruction of it cost many lives. Like to defeat the beast, the entire Imperial Fist chapter was massacred, and Vulcan himself was kicked back out of the setting. Okay, yeah, that's a problem, but what about the Tyranids? How much of a threat do they currently pose? The shit thing about fighting Tyranids is that it's almost impossible to get a clean, decisive victory over them. Like sure, eventually each high fleet is beaten to some degree, but always at huge costs. 
The Blood Angels lost the number of successor chapters and almost their homeworld. McCrag itself was hit hard. For the Elder, Crawford Leandon is now a graveyard full of wraiths because of the Tyranids. In return, sure, you destroy a Hive Fleet, but then like three more take its place, or maybe what you destroyed was merely a Splinter Fleet. It is genuinely like fighting a Hydra. What makes matters even more terrifying for the Imperium and the galaxy as a whole is that it has been implied numerous times that the Tyranids that have already caused so many problems are merely scout ships, only representing a tiny fraction of the beast that is coming. If only a handful of scout fleets are already considered an existential threat, then how would the galaxy handle an invasion hundreds or even thousands of times bigger than that? But if you thought that was the biggest of humanity's problems, then you're a fucking idiot. In the depths of numerous worlds, the soulless armies of the Necrons are reawakening. Xenos who use gods as Pokemon and can bend time and space to its will. I'm not kidding, Necrons literally have chronomancers that can move back and forth in time. They have Death Stars, a device that will destroy half the galaxy if you accidentally sneezed on it and basically cannot die. Like if you destroy one, it just teleports back home for repairs. The Necrons are the only race that left the war in heaven intact. The Krorks, which are orcs as powerful as Primarchs, devolved into what they are today, whilst the Elder have been stated to also have lost most of their technology and psychic prowess. Like the Elder used to be able to summon fully intact Eldar gods onto the battlefield. War in Heaven was wild. So the fact that the Necrons still have the weapons, armies and technologies that let them compete against Eldar gods and endless orc Primarchs is a bit of an issue. The threat from the Tau right now is uh, a bit small, but their rate of technological acceleration is startling. With the use of their AI, it seems as if they may not be too far off reaching the same level of technology that mankind did during their golden age. If you've seen my video on Mankind's Dark Age of Technology, you would know that the potential for the Tau to reach that tech level is a big problem for the entire galaxy. But wait, there's more. Chaos. The literal forces of hell backed up by four extremely powerful and evil gods that are constantly plotting on how to bring the Imperium to its knees, metaphorically, or in Slaanesh's case, quite literally. Recently, they have been able to rip the galaxy in half with the Great Rift, cutting off half the Imperium from the Astronomicon, which sucks for that side of the Imperium. They have endless hordes of demons, hundreds of thousands of Chaos Space Marines, and at least six Primarchs constantly assaulting the forces of order. With how much damage they're doing, surely it's only a matter of time before the Imperium goes kaput. And the Eldar! Well, yeah, look, the Elder aren't really a threat to anyone at the moment. Like, I'm a huge Elder fan, but I'm just not delusional. So, is the galaxy fucked? No, not at all. Now, let me explain how the forces of Order, such as the Tau, Elder, and the Imperium, actually have a pretty clear path out of all this mess that may one day result in the peace they all crave. Regarding the Orcish Menace, since the War of the Beast, the Orcs have proven to be more of a pain in the ass rather than an existential threat. They haven't managed to produce any more Crocs, and even if they did, it might not even be the worst thing. See, during the War of the Beast, the only real factions in play were the Orcs and the Imperium. But in the current setting, there are many, many more enemies for the Orcs to fight. They find themselves crumping demons, ripping Tyranids, smacking Necrons quite a lot these days. Orcs are also quite easy to bait and direct. On more than one occasion, the Imperium, or even the Elder, have baited an Orc War into attacking an enemy of theirs. I mean, just look at the Octarius War. Actually, maybe that's a bad example, but you get what I mean. Orcs like to attack big threats. The bigger the Tyranid, Chaos, and Necron threat gets, the more the Orcs will direct their attention towards them. How about the Tyranid's threat? That surely will result in our inevitable doom. Well, not necessarily. Sure, the Tyranids do learn and adapt, but so does the rest of the galaxy. New tactics and weapons are being produced all the time to help stomp the Tyranids, and it's starting to get easier. In only a few days, a handful of Tau scientists were able to develop a virus that once it was absorbed by a Tyranid, it infected an entire biofleet and caused them to rapidly break down and die. The Tau could easily inject their troops with a variety of dormant viruses that activated upon Tyranid consumption meaning that Tyranids basically can't claim Tau biomass. Sure, they could adapt to the virus, but that would take a while, and it's been shown that Tyranid adaption is actually quite an effort. For example, when the Imperium and the Tau teamed up to fight a Tyranid fleet, they won pretty easily, as the Tyranids were unable to adapt to both Tau and human weapons at the same time. They could only do one or the other. Needing to reinforce their warriors with extreme antivirus would mean each warrior would be harder to produce, hence their armies would be smaller. 
As for the Imperium, with Gilliman's return, a lot of technological embargoes have been lifted, hence people like Belsarius Call are able to experiment with some pretty spicy space bug spray. Not to mention Gilliman's command ability would completely shit on the Tyranids. Like sure, the Hivemind is a great commander, but the Tyranids have always won through sheer numbers, not through tactical genius. The Hivemind has been outplayed numerous times by space marines or even basic human commanders. Imagine going up against Gilliman. So yeah, as long as the hive mind doesn't get access to Gilliman's DNA, we should be sweet. But Major Kill, some viruses and Gilliman's big brain won't nearly be enough for when the entire Tyranid horde arrives. Timmy, what did I say about fucking the gene stealer? I know she's hot, but if she breeds, we're fucked. Good thing I castrated the little shit ages ago. Firstly, the existence of a gigantic fuck-off Tyranid army outside the Milky Way is not yet confirmed. It was shown in Battlefleet Gothic, but that game isn't canon. Even if it is canon, the galaxy still has one more trump card. The Necrons. See, whilst the Necrons are a threat to the galaxy, they aren't as much of a threat as you would think. They were so powerful during the War in Heaven because the Silent King controlled all of them, making them fight as a uniform hive mind. They also had fully intact Catan as their super weapons. These days, the Catan are broken into shards that are either used as powerful slave warriors or as batteries by the Necrons. The Necrons also lost a lot of their armies and super weapons when they turned on the Catan. All this wouldn't matter so much if it weren't for the fact that the Necrons are incredibly petty. See, the Silent King gave them all free will when they went into hibernation. So when they woke up, they were no longer this hyper-efficient unified empire. They were now split into dozens of dynasties that held grudges against each other. No one has destroyed more Necrons and Tomb Worlds than the Necrons. On top of that, many of the Necron dynasties aren't really into genocide and don't do much conquering beyond defending their Tomb Worlds. Also, their mega device, the Celestial Orrery, that can ruin a galaxy is forbidden from doing so. The Necrons who control it only use it to restore natural balance and order, not to crush their enemies. So overall, the Necrons aren't much of a threat to the order of the galaxy, but they are a huge fuck off threat to the Tyranids. The Necrons counter the Tyranids in every way, shape and form. For example, they offer no biomass, they don't use the warp so the shadow on the warp has no effect on them, their weapons disintegrate biomass, and they are almost completely immune to all bio and chemical weapons. On top of this, most of the Necrons desire to return to their flesh and soul forms, meaning they require biomass, meaning that they have a strong motivation for preventing the Tyranids' victory. The Silent King himself has returned to the setting and straight up says that the Tyranids are the threat that needs to be dealt with right now. So if the Necrons were to reunite in an unstoppable force, that force would be used against the Tyranids. Also, Trezin once captured an entire splinter fleet in one of his Pokeballs, so yeah, Necrons shit on Tyranids any day. In regards to dealing with Chaos, the Elder is slowly edging towards the awakening of Yuned, which could result in Slaanesh taking a huge kick to her many balls, whilst the Emperor himself has recently woken up and set fire to Nurgle's realm, hurting Nurgle himself. With an awakened Emperor, not to mention the return of Constantine Valdor at the head of a huge fuck off loyalist demonic army, that inevitable Chaos victory is starting to look like a fever dream of a sad, armless little bitch with a gay ass man bun. So no, the galaxy is not doomed. Every faction has a trump card or two that they are using to stay in the game, which is, you know, how it should be. Grimdark doesn't mean that everything is shit all the time and that there's no point in trying because everyone's fucked anyways. Sometimes it can mean shit is going to get hairy, but with enough 9 foot tall Aryans and soulless robots with surprisingly fun personalities, anything is possible. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of hentai, including this Necron piece with a silent G at the start so it's not copyrighted. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more grimdark, but not too grimdark content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.